So this video is going to be ultimately about ball striking, but it's something that I tend to see better golfers have more of a tendency to do, and poorer ball strikers have the opposite tendency to do. And it's just going to talk about how significant the role of ball position can play on your intent and what you're intending to do in your golf swing. So first of all, for clarification, the, the biggest problem for most amateur golfers when it comes to the impact area is they get too sort of flicky and too scoopy, which essentially just means when they're hitting it, they're adding loft, which means like so. So the club head is overtaking the handle in that hitting area. When you start to add additional loft towards the golf club, obviously you're gonna lose distance. So what we know with professional golfers is let's just keep it simple, whatever loft they have on the golf club, they're roughly sort of halving the, the loft on it. So that's why they produce that nice compressed great spinning type of shot. For a lot of amateur golfers tend to do the opposite, tend to sort of add loft on towards the back of the ball. And what that sort of technique does is it promotes also inconsistency with the contact. And the natural tendency is to move the golf ball further back in the stance. But if you move the golf ball further back in the stance, it kind of just encourages you to keep doing the same sort of bad habit. And if you keep doing this, well, it's not necessarily the most athletic way to move. And I don't think I really see any sort of progress. So what you want to start doing is you want to start moving that golf ball further forward. Now for our sort of flicky or scoopy golfer, so if I place the ball just on the instep of my lead ankle here, and I'm going to be just using a, a six iron in today's demonstration, but you, you all of a sudden our scoopy golfer would end up feeling like this, okay? And that's going to cause an element of concern. Now, obviously it's not as simple as just move the ball forward and you'll naturally do amazing. So I'm not so sure that is actually true. But there's two things that we tend to see with, with great ball strikers that we tend not to see with poor ball strikers. And, and one of those motions is linear motion. So which is a surprise to a lot of golfers that I get the opportunity to teach online. It often surprises them when they're doing this. They naturally assume, oh Russ, I'm too scoopy because I'm not rotating enough, which actually isn't true. It's because it's you're not moving enough towards your lead side. You've got to move towards your lead side and trigger rotation in the golf swing, admittedly, but it's more important to move more left. Now, what we need to do though, is I'm gonna draw a line here through the ball position, okay? But we're also gonna draw a line through my lead ankle. So in the post-impact position, what we need to be doing is we need to get, ideally, the shoulder, the hands, the club head, all in a line, reference to my lead ankle, at post-impact, which means just after you've hit the ball this way. What we don't want to do is kind of be back here somewhere. So if we keep that line there, what I tend to suggest to a lot of my students is, look, if you're scoopy and you're like here, then it's easier to start thinking about moving towards your lead side in the backswing position. And I think that's the first thing I'd suggest for you guys. If you're gonna start moving the ball forward, then that'll, you know, that'll be quite a scary thing. But what I want you to do is feel like you're moving towards that lead side in the backswing position, like so. And what this will do is this will all of a sudden, it will feel very peculiar, but the benefit of this is all of a sudden, you're gonna to start to be able to gather more momentum and you're going to break that habit so it will start to give you that little bit of confidence so that sort of linear motion is going to help you in a big way the second thing i want you to concentrate on again is not necessarily so much about the rotational movement it's actually just making sure that what you're doing with your hands and arms so if you've moved that ball go back to this move it back tendency to hang back and hit it like so so what i want you to do if you move the ball further forward, is I want you to feel like you're moving towards your lead side in the backswing. But just to keep it simple, the second thing I want you to do is just make sure that you're really trying to keep, especially that trail arm moving through that hitting area. Because if you think about it, you're so used to kind of going this way and then this way. Move the ball further forward. Even if we move you this way, we've got to try and get a feeling of moving more this way. And the simplest drill to do this is to adopt your normal grip. But what I want you to do is then just separate. So still keep the same location on the trail hand, but separate all the fingers. And what that'll do is when you start to kind of hit some shots very slowly, you start to move towards the lead side. But I want you to try and get that feeling of keeping that hand so the weather nice and straight on the way through. It doesn't matter what happens to the results. And I think this is the big thing, the big benefit 
in my opinion, of having online lessons or having lessons as you guys do anyway, and particularly with the online lessons, because you can update what's going on with your practice sessions and all of a sudden it's just a case of being brave. You know, if you start missing a few shots, but you're kind of doing the right thing, you just need to keep doing it. So if you're somebody who's scoopy, the two things you need to do is move more towards your lead side and then you need to try and match that up by getting more extension with those hands and arms in that through area, in that hitting area, in that through swing. If you start to do that, make a big difference towards your game. I'll see you guys again really soon.